Hi everyone and welcome to the NADTC webinar on expanding access to transportation for older adults and people with disabilities. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. A couple of logistics before I turn the session over and we get started. Uh, the webinar is being recorded today. We will be providing an archive of the webinar on the NADTC website, excuse me. Uh, and so the important part of that is to make sure that you recognize that your chat section and your email questions will be uh, provided in that archive. Uh, if you want to ask a question or make a comment, you are able to type that either into the chat box, which is on the left bottom of your screen, or if you have not joined the webinar room today, you can email your question to mgray at n4a.org. That's m-g-r-a-y at n4a.org. So we are providing captioning today. You can access that in one of two ways. You can either click on the CC icon, which is at the top left of your screen, or you can press Control plus F8 on your keyboard. If you're having technical difficulties with Blackboard and getting connected, you have a couple of options. You can either contact the Blackboard Technical Assistance Line, which is at 877-382-2293, or uh, you can fully participate in the session by uh, following along with the PowerPoint presentation that was uh, emailed to you and calling in to the uh, telephone line. Uh, and so that will allow you full participation if that is uh, what you need to do to participate today. So with that, uh, I, I don't want to keep you any longer from the information that's being provided today. And I'm going to turn the session over to uh, Lori Gerhart, which is uh, the Director of the Office of Integration Innovation with the U.S. Administration for Community Living. So Lori. Oh, thank you very much, Christy, and welcome everyone. On behalf of the U.S. Administration for Community Living and the U.S. Department of Transportation, Federal Transit Administration, and the National Aging and Disability Transportation Center, we'd like to welcome you to our webinar today on an expanding access to transportation for older adults and people with disabilities. This is a very important topic. We know transportation plays a key um, role in helping people engage and access life. And um, we're really excited to talk with you today. Our, my colleagues that will be joining us for the presentation today include Mary Ann Stock, who is the Chief at the Rural and Targeted Programs at the Federal Transit Administration, and Virginia Dyes, who is the National Aging and Disability Transportation Center Co-Director at the National Association of Area Agencies on Aging and 4A. Uh, today's agenda will include an overview of the U.S. Department of Transportation, Federal Transit Administration's 5307, 5310, and 5311 grant programs, an overview of the U.S. Administration for Community Living, and a nationwide network that we fund and support. Uh, ways to find match for the Federal Transit Administration 5307, 5310, and 5311 grant programs. And then we'll overview technical assistance resources that are available through the National Aging and Disability Transportation Center to support uh, grantees of um, FTA with um, 5307, 5310, and 5311, as well as additional resources that are available through NADTC. And then we'll take some questions and answers. I'll turn things over to my colleague, Mary Ann Stock. Sorry. Thank you, Lori, for the introduction. The Federal Transit Administration is really excited to be working with the Administration for Community Living to get the word out about how our respective grantees can work together and coordinate to make transportation better for older adults and people with disabilities. Um, and the recent announcement about HHS funding being able to match FTA funding is very exciting. And I'm really honored to be able to be here and share more details about how we can make this happen. The end result, we think, will be more and better transportation for the people who need it most. And that is certainly uh, the bottom line for all of us. 
Uh-oh. Did I go too fast? Oh, there we go. Okay, so I want to jump right in. Um, for people on the webinar who may not be familiar with the FTA grant programs that can use um, HHS funding as match. Um, this is our section, uh, this first slide is talking about our section 5310 uh, program, which is the program that um, most closely aligns to the um, ACL constituency and provides funding for enhanced mobility for seniors and individuals with disabilities. That's the official um, legislative name of the program. Um, and the purpose, of course, is to improve mobility for um, older adults and individuals with disabilities throughout the country, including in rural areas, urban areas, um, everywhere it's needed. Um, and it provides, um, what this program does is it provides uh, operating and capital assistance to eligible recipients including states, tribes, um, and designated recipients. What that means is that it's the particular recipients that have been designated by their governors uh, of each state to be, um, to be the recipient of FTA funding under this program. Um, and just to give you an idea of the size of the program, um, it was in FY 2020, it has about $285 million nationwide. Um, Again, um, to give you an idea of sort of how this program works and, and how it's distributed around the country, um, in, uh, it is the program itself um, has some formula aspects to it that divide it, uh, the, the nationwide funding among large urbanized areas, small urbanized areas, and rural areas. And in FY19, we had 179 recipients nationwide in large urbanized areas. 108 in small urbanized areas, and 53 in rural areas, which are the 53 are the 50 states plus a few um, territories. Um, and, and there's a wide range of how much is received in each state. Uh, as you can see here, California and Florida each received over $5 million um, for use in small urbanized areas around the state, and the smallest apportionment in this category to a state was Alaska um, that only got 80 thousand dollars to use across the state for this purpose. Um, for rural areas, uh, Texas has probably the largest uh, rural areas in the nation, and that's why they received the most funding under the program. Alaska was the smallest, and our, uh, these are our uh, territories uh, that also receive funding under this program, but they get very small amounts. Um, I wanted to briefly mention the FTAs. Um, competitive grant program, the Innovative Coordinated Access and Mobility Program that's funded under section, it's called section 3006B of our um, authorizing legislation. Um, and that program is for financing innovative projects for transportation disadvantage that improve coordination of transportation and non-emergency medical transportation services. We had a competition, um, a competitive uh, program last year that funded 37 projects, um, totaling about $9.6 million. Uh, a very large percentage of that amount went to 41% to rural areas around the country. And we have an open NOFO right now, a notice of funding opportunity for the $3.5 million that's available in FY20. Um, and so this slide uh, gives you this, the details on that. Um, Again, as I said, um, we're looking for projects that employ innovative co uh, coordination of transportation strategies um, based on partnerships um, with, uh, in general, we're hoping that there will be partnerships between transportation agencies and um, human services agencies that, um, you know, depend on transportation to um, bring their, the constituency of the older adults, the individuals with disabilities, and people of low income um, to their services. Um, we had the notice of funding opportunity was published on November 1st. Applications are due January 6th. Um, the eligible applicants are uh, the designated and direct recipients of other FTA programs that you see listed here, um, but the um, Funding opportunity requires them, as I mentioned earlier, to partner with human services agencies. So we are looking for projects that really show how in communities those partnerships occur to provide uh, more and better transportation 
for the impacted communities. Um, and I should just make one note since we're talking about MATCH today. Um, this program, unfortunately, cannot be matched because it's not a, a, an FTA formula program. It can't be matched with the HHS funding. But again, we are really emphasizing the partnerships. So we hope that, that there will be um, projects that show us how those partnerships uh, can happen even without, um, even, even without a, a match opportunity under this particular program. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention is that for more details, we're going to be having another webinar on December 3rd that will um, go into a lot more detail about how to apply for, for that program in particular. Um, another program that can be matched, though getting back to programs that can be matched by um, FTAs, uh, by the HHS funding, um, our Section 5311 program is a formula program that specifically provides funding um, for transportation in rural areas of the country. Um, as you can see here, it's available for um, capital funding, such as purchase of uh, vehicles, um, planning funding if you're planning a new transit um, service in a rural area, or for operations, operating assist, what we call operating assistance, which is really to pay for the actual operation of the service. Um, for public transportation in rural areas, and, and we define those as areas that have a population of less than 50,000. Um, this program has um, uh, $673 million available in um, FY 2020, and that includes a $35 million that's um, set aside directly for tribes. And I think I'm going to talk about that on another slide. Um, just a few things to um, give you sort of a picture of how this rural transit program works. The most commonly funded activity um, for rural transit is actually the operation of the service. Um, again, to give you sort of an idea of the volume, Texas has a lot of rural areas. They get $47 million a year under this program, and Rhode Island, a very small state, gets about 630000 but every state in the union has some rural area and receives some funding. Um, and uh, interestingly, most of our recipients under this program are providing what we call demand response service, which means it's that service where you might call it a dial a ride, where, where it's not a fixed route bus that goes from stop to stop, but you call up and make a reservation and um, you get, in general, door to door service when, when it's needed. Um, as I mentioned, this program, um, tribes are actually eligible to participate in the overall rural transit program, but there's also a separate program that's specifically for federally recognized in, um, Indian tribes, and that is for the, the tribes to provide public transit um, on their tribal lands. And um, in FY 2020, there's $35 million in that program. $30 million of that is a formula program that is distributed amongst the, the tribes according to a statutory formula. And then $5 million is a competitive program that we uh, run every year. And that is a growing program. We know that there's a great deal of transit need out in um, Indian country. And um, so as an example, uh, in FY13, we had 83 recipients under that program, and now in FY19, we have 126. Um, so it's uh, almost every year we get more tribes coming in um, to provide transit service under the, that program. And the most commonly funded activity, again, is um, the operating expenses of operating uh, the actual um, transit service. Um, in order to help everyone, uh, participate in these programs. Um, we have our three technical assistance uh, centers that FTA um, funds, and one of them, of course, is the National Aging and Disability Transportation Center that is sponsoring this webinar today, so we really appreciate that. Um, they um, all, um, they provide support particularly for our program that is for um, enhanced mobility of uh, for uh, enhanced mobility for older adults and seniors, uh, I'm sorry, older adults and people with disabilities. Um, and as you can see on the slide, it mentions that um, they usually have a community grant program as well, which would be separate from FTA's uh, grant program as funding permits. Um, we also have uh, the National Center for Mobility Management um, that supports um, communities. Uh, 
and individuals that want to create new mobility options in their communities um, and, and learn how to make those more efficient and work, work together um, on coordination. And then we have the National Rural Transit Assistance Program, and that supports our rural transit program and provides all kinds of training and resources for the um, people who are providing transit in rural areas. Um, and then we have one more um, technical assistance center that's just getting started now. Um, it's called the National Center for Applied Transit Technology. It's our brand new center um, that is going to be supporting transit systems um, in developing new technologies and new uh, institutional paradigms or ways of being organized um, that help uh, there will be more transit service in rural and small rural areas and small cities, um, and you know uh, use new technology to sustain services most effectively. So you'll probably be seeing more about that service, that that technical assistance center, as we're going to be promoting it um, in the coming weeks and months. Um, just to give you an idea, the F, um, as it says here. Uh, the FTA-funded technical assistance centers um, provide competitive grants to communities um, that are uh, a little bit more flexible in some ways than um, FTA's direct grants. Usually they do not require a match, um, and they help uh, communities that want to get into transit service that may or may not be already um, uh, grantees of, of FTA, but are, but are starting to um, develop new mobility options. So these are some of the examples. Um, in 2019, the Greater Portland Council of Governments in Portland, Maine, um, began testing uh, a citywide weekly sh shopper shuttle service for older adults and people with disabilities and for individuals with low incomes. Um, and uh, it, you know, they developed this little project with the grant um, to meet an unmet need in their community for free or low-cost door-to-door transportation for grocery shopping. Um, and then um, in Tulsa, Tulsa, Oklahoma, the Area Agency on Aging um, is developing a paratransit travel training program to help older adults and people with disabilities who live in food deserts um, access grocery stores through existing transportation services. So, and, and through ride-sharing services as well. So those are some examples of um, grants that have been funded through our uh, technical assistance centers, and we encourage you to look out for those grant opportunities as well as they come up in the future. Um, I wanted to take just very briefly and quickly to go um, explain a little bit about our Coordinating Council access on Access and Mobility, um, which is an interagency partnership um, with 11 federal agencies that you see on the slide on the right-hand side, um, and the what we call the CCAM, or Coordinating Council on Access and Mobility, um, is uh, consists of all of these federal agencies working together um, to implement this mission of issuing policy recommendations um, and uh, implementing activities to improve the availability, accessibility, and efficiency of transportation for the same targeted populations that we've been talking about, individuals with disabilities, older adults, and individuals of low income. Um, in order to fulfill some requirements that um, are in legislation about the CCAM, um, we, uh, in 2018, the uh, CCAM conducted some focus groups and um, to specifically to ask uh, the uh, participating agencies at the, at the state and local level about barriers to transportation coordination. And one of the uh, highest uh, barriers that came up was limited awareness um, of federal funding sources that are available for these constituencies and of the policies that, that enable coordination. So that is one of the purposes of today's um, webinar. We're trying to, among many other activities that we're undergoing, to try to address that issue. So we're happy that you're here participating to increase your awareness. Um, again, in order to address that limited awareness um, barrier, we are going to have another webinar series going on in 2020. Um, we've developed um, a, an inventory of all of the federal programs that can fund transportation. Um, there are currently 130 of them. 
uh, on our list. Um, and these are all uh, various federal programs that provide various services for, again, those three targeted populations. And um, as you can see, HHS has 66 programs, many more than the Department of Transportation has. Um, and so in order to, again, increase awareness about these for all grantees of any of our CCAM member agencies, um, we are going to have a series of webinars uh, starting in January of 2020 um, to talk about all of these programs and how they can work together um, to fund more transportation. Uh, another uh, activity of the CCAM was the development of a course called the Advancing Mobility Management Course offered by the National Transit In Institute. Um, and this is a class for uh, mobility management professionals to help in improve coordination between transit and non-traditional stakeholders, such as um, human services agencies. And so um, it talks about how to form these partnerships. Um, and how to implement mobility management strategies in your community. It's, it is free for public transit and for government agencies. So if you're interested, there's a list on the slide of um, dates that's being offered. And um, you can register at the link that's on the slide. Um, so we also wanted to just bring to your attention um, some of the uh, changes to non-emergency medical transportation um, that are potentially uh, underway. Um, in 2019, the Health and Human Services budget um, committed to using its regulatory authority to uh, make the um, what is currently a requirement for states to provide non-emergency medical transportation to all Medicaid beneficiaries. Um, the 2019 Human Services budget um, proposes to make that um, optional for states to participate in. If you want more information about that, you can look at, um, at this link to the uh, HHS budget for 2019. Um, and the, um, there's been some research on non-emergency medical uh, transportation um, that shows how um, the way different states are handling non-emergency medical transportation brokerage um, opportunities. Um, is sort of listed out in this report um, from the Transportation Research Board. And again, there's a link that if you're interested to see um, what's going on in your state in this area, you can um, click on the link and see that report. And that's all I have for the Federal Transit Administration. So thank you for listening, and I'll be around for the question session at the end. Thank you very much, Mary Ann. Um, this is Lori Gerhard from the Administration for Community Living. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Administration for Community Living. We are an operating agency within the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Our mission is to maximize the independence, well-being, and health of older adults, people with disabilities across the lifespan, and their families and caregivers. Our guiding principle is that people with disabilities and older adults should be able to live where they choose with the people they choose and participate fully in their communities. ACL funds a nationwide network. We'll go on to the next slide. Um, and this is one of our greatest strengths. This nationwide network reaches into every community across the country. It is staffed and run by the people who live in these communities. And they really know the resources that are available in the communities and the ways in which they can best help people access those services. The nationwide access system serves older adults, people with disabilities, caregivers, and their families, and helps them get connected to the services and publicly funded programs that enable them to thrive in their communities. This network, nationwide network, includes organizations like State Units on Aging, Area Agencies on Aging, Centers for Independent Living, State Assistive Technology Act programs, tribal organizations, University Centers for Excellence in Developmental Disabilities, and many others. We have more than 1,322 access points across the country in each of the 56 states and territories. ACL invests in, or ACL, or the Administration for Community Living, invests in transportation. In fiscal year 2018, we provided over 20 million rides to older Americans through our nationwide network. 2.3 million rides that included an assistant to support the person receiving this, 
transportation, and approximately 16,900 people with disabilities um, receive some type of transportation service. That could include peer-to-peer -peer training to learn about public transit systems, transportation vouchers, and other transportation services. Um, this is from information we received through the Centers for Independent Living. And it's really important to know that in Centers for Independent Living, they help people that have newly acquired disabilities, too, or even temporary um, disabilities as a result of uh, medical procedures that they may have um, related to um, maybe they're, they are healing from a broken leg and have some immobility. So um, the Centers for Independent Living provide peer-to-peer -peer training. So there are people with disabilities who know how to navigate transportation systems, and they're available in Centers for Independent Living to help people who have limited mobility learn how to use the public transportation system um, and, and who um, may also be unfamiliar with even accessing um, the, the transportation services. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit, too, about a, a grant that we administer collectively with the Federal Transit Administration, and it's called the Inclusive Community Transportation uh, Planning Program. And this grant is administered through the um, Community Transportation Association of America in partnership with the National Area National Association of Area Agencies on Aging, N4A, uh, UMass Boston IHI Institute, and David Bernstein Consulting. And this grant um, provides small community, small demonstration grants to communities of um, transportation planners, or um, it requires transportation planners or uh, transportation service providers, and organizations that um, include people with disabilities, older adults, or caregivers. Um, and the whole purpose of the grant is to help bring together the voice of the people that use transportation services to influence the design and the delivery of transportation services. Through this grant, um, we have been able, through, through these community demonstrations, to really understand how do we include consumers or older adults, people with disabilities, and caregivers in the design of transportation services? We have developed a tool called the Ladders of Inclusivity, which are a self-assessment tool that organizations that um, provide transportation can use to determine how inclusive they are in their um, development of their transportation services and delivery of those services. Um, we also um, those also can be used by the people that they serve so they can see how close their self-assessment might be to what their people they serve um, feel and how they've been included in the design and delivery of the transportation services. This is really important as we think about designing person-centered transportation, um, designing the services so they really work for the people that use them. In addition, through these small community grants, we've been able to develop um, services that um, are more responsive to people. So for instance, in Kentucky, they identified that their um, bus drivers were having some challenges communicating with non people that were non-commutative. And there were also challenges for people that were non-commutative in communicating with the bus drivers. So the University of Kentucky identified this challenge and worked collectively with the um, transit system and the bus drivers and people with disabilities and came up with an app that can be used and is available on buses so that the people with disabilities and are non-communicative are able to be communicating with the bus driver and vice versa. And this has really improved quality of the, from the rider's perspective and also influenced and reduced turnover with the bus drivers who were frustrated at times when they weren't communicating. Um, so that is just one example. I wanted to also um, share about the Americans with Disabilities Act Participation Action Research Consortium, also known as PARC, P-A-R-C. Um, P-A-R-C publishes maps that assist policymakers, community, community leaders, transportation developers, and state leaders in understanding transportation needs and opportunities for improvement. The metropolitan leaders um, in 
Austin, Texas, decided to invest $73 million to improve sidewalks and access to public transportation. And they learned this through using the park data and interacting with the people that use public transit. And they also are putting wheelchair charging stations at these bus stops because one of the things that was identified by their riders is that the, the path that they had to navigate to get to the bus stop, the sidewalks were in poor, um, they, they were um, hard to navigate and they were also um, needed some improvements. And then also um, the distance they had to go, the wheelchairs were almost, if you had a motorized wheelchair, it was almost out of power by the time you got to the bus stop. Uh, so this is enhancing the access to the transportation, to the transportation services. And um, PARC is, an, is a resource for organizations looking to apply for some of the FTA grants because there's data in, in that um, resource, uh, in PARC that could be useful um, for you in, in making your case. The last item I wanted to mention is Assistive Technology Act programs. ACL funds uh, a nationwide Assistive Technology Act program available in all 56 states and territories. The Assistive Technology Act programs demonstrate and teach people how to use assistive technology. Um, there is technology out, for example, in, in, there is technology available that help people get in and out of vehicles, that help people access and schedule rides through, app, through apps. There is technology like the WeWalk cane that has, um, it's, a, it's a cane for people with vision impairment that has Google Maps built into it and it speaks to you so you can tell what's coming. Um, there's just a lot of assistive technology that can be assistive to people who are in need of transportation and we encourage you to access your state assistive technology act program. I'd like to um, move into uh, finding match for FTA grants. So the federal transit law um, permits funds from other federal government programs to be used to match three types of federal transit administration grants for public transit. Um, and my colleague Marianne Stock mentioned these earlier. Uh, 5307 funds in urbanized areas, 5310 funds in rural areas, and 5311 funds for enhanced mobility of older adults and people with disabilities. FTA grants are available for capital projects such as purchase of vehicles and often are available to pay for operating expenses. Disability use federal funds as matched can be especially helpful in rural areas and for private nonprofit agencies providing services to vulnerable populations. If you are a recipient of an Administration for Community Living um, grant, that is used for transportation and you are using that grant for the intended purposes of the ACL grant for transportation, you can use the money that you spent on transportation provided that you're using it for the original services within the ACL grant as matched to satisfy the FTA 5307, 5310, or 5311 grant. Um, and we wanted to be sure that you're aware of that because we believe by clarifying and public publicizing this practice, we can increase access to Federal Transit Administration 5307, 5310, and 5311 funds for states and communities, especially in rural and frontier areas where we know that there is limited funds available to use as match. When communities and states do not have their required match, they forego applying for Federal funds. We want to assure that the federal funds that are available for transportation can get to these areas where there is a lot of need. So um, with that, we're thrilled to be partnering with the Federal Transit Administration and the U.S. Department of Transportation to further expand this practice. And I'll turn things over to Virginia Dives from the National Aging and Disability Transportation Center. Uh, thanks, Lori. And we're going to move uh, right along. I want to move on to the can. Uh, post questions or make comments in the chat box if you're online. Um, if you're not online and just on the phone, uh, feel free to send an email to M Gray as N as in Nancy, the number 4A as in Apple, so M4A.org. Um, so I'm assuming that a lot of people, if not all of you, are familiar with the MADTC. We are a partnership. 
uh, between Easter Seals and N4A, which is where I work. My counterpart is Carol Wright Candidine at Easter Seals. We're funded by the Federal Transit Administration within the U.S. Department of Transportation. Next slide. Um, our, we have a very broad mission, and somehow or another that slide isn't coming up, but I'll tell you what the mission is anyway. Um, it's to promote the availability of accessible transportation options that particularly serve the needs of older adults, people with disabilities, caregivers, and communities. Um, and included in our work are, is a lot of emphasis on providing individualized technical assistance and uh, two, two programs as well as to individuals that want to know how to improve their transportation in their community. Uh, we have an, a nationwide toll-free uh, website um, as well as uh, an email address, NABTC, um, I'm sorry, contact at NABTC.org. Um, and you can also, we have a number of uh, different publications and resources on our website. Uh, Marianne uh, mentioned that we do uh, usually an annual uh, small grant competition. Uh, you can expect to see something on our next uh, small grant uh, competition, probably around the new year. So I'm going to go on to the next slide. Um, actually, for some reason, that other one um, isn't coming, coming up. Um, so this is kind of thing too, uh, Melissa. Um, I, I will also say that 5310 has always been part of our mission and work through the NADTC. Um, and one of the things that we are doing in cooperation with the Federal Transit Administration is for the 37 um, access and mobility grants that FTA announced in May. Um, in those, that particular instance, we're providing um, technical assistance and we're working with the grantees uh, to help them uh, uh, with their performance measures and to help them track their successes. Um, so finally, I will just keep this slide up, which is the main thing I wanted to say, that we have a few resources on our website that are specific to 5310 funds. Uh, we have done a number of webinars since uh, 2016, as well as online courses and conference presentations that were focused on 5310, um, including a, a webinar that we did, I think we did this one in 2016 or 2017, called the 5310 Webinar 2, State Perspective, and the value of that really um, is that there are examples of what states are doing with their 5310 funding. Um, we've also got a couple of publications from 2018. Uh, one is called Innovation, Innovative Approaches to 5310 Funding Match, specifically focusing on the funding match, and it does talk about uh, being able to use ACL funds as a match for 5310. Um, as well as there is a blog post that we did in 2018. You can expect to see um, this webinar with all of the slides uh, posted on our website uh, probably uh, next week, hopefully before the, the holiday. Um, there's our contact information. Um, again, I encourage you all, if you've got questions or issues, and especially if you're on the phone and are unable to get, you've got a burning question that you're unable to get it answered during the period of time for this webinar, uh, feel free to uh, send us an email at contact at nebtc.org or call our toll-free number, uh, and we will be glad to uh, assist you in any way that we possibly can. Um, with that, um, I guess we'll open it up to questions, Lori. Um, and uh, so I've got one question that has just been sent to me. Um, is this question that just came in? Oh, okay. So um, it's, it's a person uh, who's asking about services for older people and people with disabilities, um, saying that many passengers that use smartphones with their journey, getting transit information uh, can be challenging for people who don't have smartphones. 
Uh, calling a health center for a transit operator isn't really useful for somebody who's using uh, sign language. Um, and wondering if there is funding available for technological solutions uh, that aid accessibility of public transportation um, and supports customers. So, um, Marianne, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn that to you, um, and 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 then I'll see if Lori has anything to add to it. Sure, thank you. Um, that is uh, a good question. Um, I guess, uh, and part of my response is that. Um, in general, our, our programs are used, our, our, all of the FTA's grant programs are used by the recipients um, to uh, do, make various investments that they think are beneficial to their customers. So if it certainly um, enhancements to a transit information center to help make it more accessible to customers, um, if that is a priority in a particular community for and a transit system believes that and would like to, it is certainly an eligible expense under many of our programs um, and they would be able to structure an FTA grant application in order to do that. Um, so again, um, uh, one of the things that I neglected to mention with regard to our 5310 program for enhanced mobility for seniors and people with disabilities is that um, there is a requirement that um, in order to apply for that program, all of our grantees have to um, be working with their community on a coordinate, what is called a, a coordinated human services transportation plan. And that is a whole uh, a planning effort um, that is intended to um, help the community develop what types of enhancements to their transit system is most needed for um, accessibility you know, purposes to, to serve the populations better. So the project that you describe um, to make transit information more readily to, available to people with, with various disabilities um, would be the perfect type of, of um, project to bring to that plan. And, and our transit systems are required, you know, to have participation from the community and from the human services agencies in the community in that planning process. So I would encourage anyone interested in a project like that in your community um, to uh, try to find out, you know, where where this, how that plan is being developed, who's the primary agency that develops it, and and bring that need to that to that planning process. Thank you so help? much. Uh, just a reminder to everyone: you can have uh, you can post your question in one of two ways. You can post them in the chat section, which is the bottom left of your screen, or you can email your question to M Gray at n4a.org, that's M-G-R-A-Y at n4a.org. Um, so I apologize for the little bit of issue we had with the uh, posting of the PowerPoint presentation, but we are getting your questions. Uh, and so uh, we do have the next question, which is, uh, let's see here, is mobility management an eligible activity under the FTA programs and also programs funded by the ACL. This is Mary Ann Stuck. I'll answer on behalf of FTA. Yes, mobility management is eligible, an eligible activity under um, all of our grant programs. And um, yeah, that's the FTA. Thank you. I can't answer for ACL. Fantastic. <laughs> all right, this the is next Lori. question. We have uh, that Chrissy. Second. Christy, hold on for just a second. I, I think Lori has something to add to this. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Christy. And this is Lori at ACL. Um, there are some grants where mobility management is um, a possibility. And um, for instance, in the No Wrong Door systems, there are person-centered counselors that can help with mobility management. There's also um, some additional grants where mobility management could be something that would be um, covered or research in this area could be funded. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, so we do have another question in the chat section, which is, uh, how would an urban agency or state agency apply and secure HHS match, and how would that be shown uh, in the uh, TRAMS application and likewise, what is the best way for rural agencies to secure 
and leverage HHS funding. Okay. So, so this is Lori Gerhardt at ACL. I'm going to turn things over to Marianne because the match will be shown in the FTA application. The key piece to remember from the HHS ACL perspective is that the the funds that you are using as match, the grant funds from HHS that you are using as match need to be used for the intended purpose of the HHS grants. And and um, you need to be able to fully account that you're using those funds for that HHS grant. And I'll turn things over to Marianne to talk about how you would reflect if you were using any of those funds as matched for the FTA through the FTA application. Sure. Um, so I think that uh, the most important thing would be that your um, project your, in your grant application to the FTA uh, fully describes the entire project, including whatever portion of it um, is is being funded through that match. And then um, I don't have in front of me the specific uh, codes for how you identify the match, but there are um, it, it, similar to anything um, a, any other grant and you know match that you're um, that you're using. Um, you would just construct your grant application the same way you would ordinarily do it. Um, and then uh, you, you you could just identify um, that that is your source of funding. We do it would be great if you would do that. And not everyone. <laughs> I don't think it's actually even a requirement that you um, specifically identify the exact source of your match to FTA in most of these programs. Um, but it certainly helps us out if you do. Um, that we we'd love to know that you're doing this with HHS. Um, so you would just follow your normal grant application procedure in TRAMS um, and just, like I said, make sure that your eligible expenses are fully, you know, your, your entire project is fully described, including the parts that are eligible for the HHS funding and, and that you're using that funding. Um, and this is Virginia. I'd just like to add to what Lori and uh, Marianne have said that uh, Marianne has, has mentioned the importance of the transit human services planning process, and that's a perfect, um, a, you know, organization or effort that can create partnerships and a close working relationship between HHS programs and transit programs. So it's a good way to start talking about the match requirements and whether or not funds are available um, to support a, a new idea or a new effort that may be going on. So Kristen, back to you. Fantastic. Thank you guys so much. Uh, there was an additional question uh, in the chat section about the December 3rd webinar uh, regarding the no notice of funding uh, available. Uh, and it was about quite a, a details that were available. Um, I think maybe the best thing we could do is provide uh, a link to the description of the webinar and uh, registration information. But if you guys wanted to mention anything regarding what uh, the expectation for the agenda for the webinar is, that might be helpful. Sure. Um, I'll just quickly say, yes, I agree. We will, um, if you don't already have it, uh, ACL will provide it to you so all the participants on this call can, can have the details and how to register. Um, the webinar is really geared towards potential applicants and as I'm um, for, and we'll sort of go through all of the requirements in our current funding opportunity, um, you know, what we're looking for in a good application, um, how to apply all the different sections you need to fill out in your application, um, and, and you know, eligible expenses, all of the details you need to know to submit a good um, application uh, under that notice of funding opportunity. And we have, it, it is linked, it's, it's out, it's been published um, in the Federal Register, and there's a uh, place on grants.gov. Um, just to, as I mentioned earlier, primary applicants do have to be um, current FTA recipients, but um, we are definitely looking for them to be as part of the of the details of that is that they have to um, demonstrate to us that they are partnering within their community with human services agencies. So um, 
we hope to see a lot of that, and I hope a lot of you uh, tune in for that webinar also. Um, it is uh, the information on the webinar is posted on the NADTC website, um, so that you can uh, follow the information and get the link to register for the webinar. Fantastic! And I just put the um, NADTC web, uh, website into the chat section for those of you who may not be familiar with that. So, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Melissa, this is all the questions that I have in the chat box. I don't know if you have any more additional questions in the email. Uh, no. Um, so I guess that's, that's it. Um, yeah, so uh, we wanted to thank you all again for attending today's webinar. And we want to encourage you to help us get the word out. Tell, tell at least three friends about um, this opportunity to really leverage um, the transportation funds to reach um, to provide greater access to transportation. Thank you each for everything you do each day to serve people with disabilities, older adults, and caregivers across the country. You make a difference in their lives, and we truly appreciate it. So thank you very much. So on behalf of and, and we will Absolutely. And we will be sending out an evaluation for the session today. Um, please take a moment to fill that out. We use that to improve future sessions. But thank you so much for your participation today. And uh, take a look at the NADTC website, which is nadtc.org, to find out about future sessions and technical assistance and training opportunities. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.